There we go. Hello, everyone. I think we should be live. Sorry, I was just trying to speak then and forgot I have uh, muted my mic. But hopefully we should be live on the page now. I can see that lots of you are joining me already. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit late today. It's just been a crazy busy week this week. Um, but we are here for the stamp along. Two o'clock this Wednesday and we're going to be using the gorgeous new nesting dies today which is all very very exciting so if you are watching please do leave some comments and um, um, on the screen send me some likes let me know if you are going to be stamping along with me today i can see that lots of you in the facebook group the stamp spy chloe group have already been prepping and are all prepared for today's stamp along i think some of you are more prepared than me actually you seem to have all of your die cutting and things done which is amazing um, so yes, very, very exciting. So we're going to be making a fabulous project today. We are going to be using the brand new um, nesting circle, da uh, nesting circles. That is not a circle, is it? It's a rectangle. Oh my word, I think I'm losing it today. So <laughs> this is a fabulous um, fancy rectangle die that we're going to be using. And we're also going to be using the basic rectangle dies as well. So these are the brand new nesting dies that launched on the website. Was it Friday night? I think they went live. Friday night. And you have all gone absolutely crazy for them. Like seriously, we, we thought they'd be popular. And I really hope that you would all love them as much as I do. But oh my word, you have kept us so, so busy over the weekend. So thank you all so, so much. Um, you will have probably seen the pictures on the page of us sending out all of your orders and things that you have been placing. So thank you all so, so much. And it has been fabulous. I noticed that some of you got your dies yesterday and you have already made some cards and posted them in the facebook group which is fabulous so i'm so so pleased to hear that you are all loving the new nesting dies lots of you have been asking when we are going to be getting them back into stock so basically we we kind of we were in bright and early on monday morning we worked all weekend to get the orders out and then monday morning we got the reorder straight in so we are working with the factory now and hopefully we should have an update pretty soon as to when the next batch will be coming in. Um, so fingers crossed, we should know very, very soon when they'll be in. Of course, when we do, we'll send an email out and um, what we're going to do this time is we're going to give you the option to pre-order them. So we'll be popping them on the website on pre-order so that you can reserve the ones that you want um, before the stock actually comes in. So... Okay, I think that is everything that I had to tell you all today. Thank you all so much for your lovely, lovely comments. Hello to uh, Pauline, to Deirdre, Maria, Eileen, Sue, Nina. Thank you all so, so much. Um, so yes, very, very exciting. Lots going on at Chloe HQ at the moment. It is very, very crazy there <laughs> at the minute. But yes, all very exciting. So, should we get started with today's stamp along? I can see so, so many of you are watching me already. Um, so, thank you so much. Hello to Annette and Denise as well. Thank you all so much for joining me today. So, in case you missed the start of the video, because I can see like the numbers have just, the viewing numbers have literally just jumped right up. This is the project that we are going to be making today. So, we're going to be making this card here. So, we're going to be making a lovely shaped card blank using the brand new nesting dies. Okay. So, if you haven't got these, I think there's a handful of the basic ones left on the website i think i haven't checked today and um, but the last time i looked there was the fancy ones have sold out but like i say we will be getting them back in and um, we're just waiting on dates and things so i'm going to turn the camera around so you can see what i'm doing actually i'm not i'm going to put the little screen up first to tell you what you're going to need now i've made a little bit of an adaption to what i've um what i'm using so I, on the finished sample i've used razzle dazzle for the glitter in the background but I'll be honest, um, I've been in my craft room today and I knocked the entire pot on the floor. So the, the flooring looked lovely in my craft room, but I haven't actually got any for the stamp along. So I'm going to improvise and I'm going to use Crystal Twinkle instead. So yes, it's just been one of those days today, I think. So I'm going to put the list of materials in of the things that you need. So let me just grab that in. There we go. Okay, so this is what we are going to be using today. Um, so we've got the 8x8 fancy rectangle 
dies we're going to be using the eight by eight basic rectangle dies as well we're going to be using the beautiful clematis flower stamp which i think i think that might have sold out as well on the website over the weekend actually and um, we're going to be using the happy birthday sentiment stamp set for your sentiment in the middle so obviously if you want to use um like a it for a a um an anniversary card or something else you can adapt the sentiment the next thing that we're going to need is the spring foliage stamp set we literally now use that every week because it is fabulous we are also going to need the petite poker stencil now this stencil i absolutely love and i'm going to show you why you can basically create your own pattern papers with this but you can put glitter on and i just think that's awesome we're also going to be using glitter in the following colors we're going to use razzle dazzle we've got crystallina winter wonderland and unicorn sparkle okay you're going to need our luxury pearl card in both crystal white and rose quartz and you're also going to need our luxury pearl paper in rose quartz too we're going to need some heat resistant acetate we're going to need some metallic silver super fine embossing powder so that is um to do your sentiment with so obviously if you want to change the color you can we are also going to need the wow opaque bright white super fine embossing powder which i think is back in stock on the website yay we've been waiting for weeks for that so that's back in stock now if you hop over and have a look or it was last time i checked and um, the cosmic shimmer clear texture paste funny story with that as well i've managed to glue the lid onto the top of mine it's just not going my way today is it so i'm going to use one of the sparkle paste and then put the glitter over the top and hopefully that'll give the the same similar effect and um, the next item that we're going to need are some pearl beads just from your stash so these are like beads that i've just collected over the years and also some an eight by eight straight edge card blank so that's going to be to cut our um, actual card blank down from okay so that is what we are going to be using today so we're going to get started and let me pop the camera to the overhead and grabbing my card blank I've just popped it over here out the way for now hopefully you've all got your materials all gathered together and we are ready to go okay then so i'm going to do my best to keep up with the comments if we're getting um questions asked about products and things like that I'm, it, they're really hard for me sometimes to answer them during the stamp along lives so i'm not kind of ignoring you it's just sometimes they're a little bit um a little bit more tricky to answer okay then so we are going to get started so this is what we're making in case you've just joined so we're going to be using all of those fabulous materials that i've just listed out okay and we're going to be using them to create this so we're going to start off by creating a shaped card blank okay so to do that what we're going to do is grab in our fabulous new fancy rectangle dies okay and you can see because i noticed in the group actually there were quite a few comments about storing these dies so give me two seconds i'll try and show you what i do let me just put them back in the packet i got a bit over excited there so basically when you get these home I've, I've chopped it off the top of all mine but it has like a little envelope flap across here with chloe's creative cards foiled on the back so what you need to do is i just cut i, I very carefully peeled the tape away here so it's stuck with double-sided tape and then you just need to peel the back off and then i just cut along the top with my scissors and just took that little strip off so basically it then gives you like a little pouch to keep your dies in so the dies obviously all come on the magnetic sheet okay so what we're going to do to start with is we're going to take a die to cut our card blank so the longest die at the side here is eight inches okay so that's the longest size so i'm going to go in for the next size down so i'm like we we came up with a theory i think i can't remember who it was i think it was allison from memory and we were going to basically number the die so one's the largest and then we work in over so um, i'm basically using die number two okay to cut my card blank from so what i'm then going to do is take my eight by eight card blank i'm going to take my die and overhang it on the edge so the way that i overhang my die is if i pop that out the way that's just my scrap of paper is i overhang it like that so i'll tape it in place let me grab some tape and um, i'll just tape this down and then we can see where i can hold it up to show you so basically what i do is line it up i overhang it so you've got the the kind of curves overhanging on your card and then i tape it in place like so so if i hold that up okay can you see there how that's just overhanging slightly 
and then you've got the cutting blade off the other side so basically that's going to allow you to create your shaped card blank okay and then you'll still have your fold down the side so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to run this through my die cutting machine so to do this i am going to use um my gemini so our dies are all these these particular dies sorry the nesting dies are engineered to cut through two thick sheets of card so this is a craft uk card blank that i'm using so it's around 300 gsm so the plate combination that i use on my gemini is i use my base plate my plastic shim i put my die on cut side up on my card blank and i put my, cu my cutting plate on the top and then I run that through my machine, okay? My machine's set up behind me, so I'm just gonna turn away. So sorry, you'll just have to look at my craft map for a little bit, <laughs> just while that runs through. Okay, so it's just running through my machine there now. Hopefully you can hear that in the background. And then when we take this away, you can see, take the tape away you've got your lovely card blank there okay now the the size that it, it kind of looks like it's that you've got that straight edge okay which is fine you can leave it like that but what we're going to do is we're going to cut a second one of this exact same shape just for, from some white card just grab my white card in here Okay, and we're just going to run that through the die cutting machine. So I'm going to put my white card on the top and then just run that through. And we're basically going to stick that onto the front of our card. Okay, so we run that through. You noticed how shiny and new my plates are as well. I treated myself the other day to some new plates because I thought mine were a little bit disgraceful. So there we go. Denise is asking, what cards do you use? So basically, cards and envelopes are a bit of a weird one. Depends how companies measure them. So the ones that I use are Craft UK, so they're literally just under 8x8 in size. Um, but some companies actually determine the size of the envelope size. <laughs> so you can end up with some that are like 7.5 inches square, um, which is a little bit weird when you thought you got 8x8. But anyway, um, so yes, it very much depends on how the companies are measuring them. So basically, um, I, just use, I just use the Craft UK ones all the time, to be honest right so what we've then got is we've got this lovely shape die cut out and then we're just going to place this over the top onto our card blank so then you've got that lovely fancy shaped card okay so what we're going to do now is i'm going to grab in some scrap paper i'm going to grab in a chisel tip glue pen okay so these are fabulous so these are the chisel tip glue pens these are what i use all the time i'm going to use some crystallina glitter okay so what we're then going to do is just take this and i'm just going to drag along the edge of my shape like that okay if you hold that pen at like a 45 degree angle you'll find it really really easy to just drag it along the side of your card blank like so okay so you're just going to run it along like this dunk it in do one more here and if i hold that up can you see how you've got that little glittery edge there as well okay so what we're going to do now is i'm going to put these to one side i'm going to stick this onto the front of my card blank like so so to do that i'm just going to use a bit of kalal glue Okay, I'm just going to literally put a small amount of glue all over my card blank like so. I just like to make sure I get well into the corners as well, just to make sure it's nicely stuck down. And we'll twist, twizzle that round. Okay, and then we're going to just stick that onto the front of our card like so. Then, if we get that all nicely lined up, see how you've got a fabulous shape card blank how easy was that to do okay and then obviously you can write your sentiment inside as normal so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to pop that to one side and then i'm going to grab in some of my rose quartz pearl card i had a sheet of this somewhere seeing that i'm just burying everything today there it is. 
Okay, so we're gonna grab in our rose quartz pearl card and I'm gonna do the stenciling next, just so then it has time to dry when we come to assemble our card at the end. So what I'm gonna do is take some low tack tape. Okay, I'm just gonna cut some lengths off just so that we can get this stencil taped into place. Okay. So I always like to stencil my backgrounds before I die cut them as well because otherwise you can find you get a little bit of paste like creeping underneath your stencil and things which obviously is not what we want. Sorry I'm pulling that closer to me and then you can't see what I'm doing there. Okay so what I'm going to do is just line that up there like so. So I'm taking my stencil down at the top. This in effect is going to act like a hinge. Okay. I'm going to tape it down either side as well. So I'm making sure it's nice and flush. Actually, I'm not going to do the side. I like to do the bottom bit next. So you do this bit next here. Okay, what you can then do is pull your, pull your stencil nice and taut. So then it's against your card. Okay, and that just, it helps to stop your, um, your tape, your paste, sorry, creeping underneath. It's that one. And then one more just to this side here. So we've got that all nicely taped down. Now it's at this point that you would use your lovely clear texture paste. Okay, but it was at that point that I realised I couldn't get the lid off and I've managed to glue it on. So I'm going to use this sparkle paste. So this will dry clear, I hope, with a sparkly finish. It should dry clear. Okay, so I'm going to paste this through. But what I'm going to do to make sure it's all nicely in keeping with my card is I'm going to cover it with our sparklicious glitter as well. Then it'll just get rid of this kind of... It's like a yellowy orange, isn't it? Kind of undertone of this paste. Okay, so pasting through like so. So I'm just using a palette knife. Of course, if you haven't got a palette knife at home, you could use like an old credit card and um, something like that. Obviously, an old one. You don't want to be using your brand new one. Okay, so we're gonna paste this through like so. keep on pasting till we've got that stencil all nicely covered i love this stencil as well it's just awesome for making all of your lovely backgrounds it is great for um obviously using with your pastes like this but it looks really nice ink through as well it's such a plain stencil it's, it's just a lot of dots but it just works so so well but we've got like the size of these dots like perfect so they really work just nicely on all of your projects okay so we've got these for just pasting through the things i've got everywhere there it looks pretty good to me anyway okay then so what we're going to do next is we're going to remove the tape i'm going to go my side pieces first okay so there's a question would the Cosmic Shimmer paste work in soft white? Yes, it would, but it would just give you white dots on your card as opposed to like clear, so you won't get the pink shining through. Okay, so then we're going to lift this off. Now it's at this point, once you lift, oh, look at that, I've put too much pressure on and it's creeped underneath. Nightmare. Never mind. We do have this stencil in stock on the website as well. Everything I'm using is on chloescreativecards.co.uk. So you can see there, I've put a little bit too much pressure on my stencil look and the paste's creeped underneath. But that doesn't matter because I'll just cut my me rectangle from the other bit that's perfect. So what I'm going to do now is, this is it's at this point that if you've got Razzle Dazzle and you didn't throw it on the floor like I did this morning, you'd put your Razzle Dazzle over. But we're going to use the next best thing, which is Crystal Twinkle. Okay. Try to figure out where this camera is. I've got a bit of a new setup going on today and it's confusing me greatly. So this one's Crystal Twinkle. So it's basically Razzle Dazzle, but in a finer grade. Okay, so it's got the same colour tones in. So I'm going to sprinkle this over the top. Crystal Twinkle's lovely as well because you can use it to edge your cards. It's just a really, really pretty colour. It's like got a bit of a more golden pink and green undertone to it compared to your other pastes and things okay so you can just see 
And you see how the glitters clunk to the dots there? Okay, so that's going to look really, really pretty for our background. So what I'm going to do is leave that to one side to dry while we work on the rest of the project. So I'm going to put that into the back into my jar there. Now look at this, I treated, treated myself to the other day. Look at this, let me get it. Got one of these, I saw someone posted it in the group and I thought, oh, I'll have to have one of them. A little, um, a little glitter back. Quite good, quite good. So I'll just give me a little deck to hoover over there. There we go. And I'll just get rid of all the, the glitter and mess. Okay, so what we're going to do next is that we are going to we'll create this little white frame. Okay, so this is really easy to do. So, in effect, our next layer down from the fancy rectangles is going to be this smaller one. So that's going to be cut from our stencil background. Okay. But then we're going to take the basic rectangles. Now, honestly, these basic dies are insane value. You get like 24 dies in this packet. It's just crazy. So what we're going to do is take the two, two of the rectangles. So let me just see if I can figure out which ones I've chosen for the finished card. So I've gone about that far in. So I've, pull, I've pulled that one from there on my magnetic sheet. So we're going to use that as the outer frame. And then for the inner frame, I'm probably going to miss two or maybe even three. Depends how thick you want your frame to be. So I think that's probably quite a nice thickness. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to grab some crystal white card. Now our crystal white card is lovely. It's like a white pearlescent card. Really, really pretty. So we're going to lift a piece of card out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that, put that out of the way for now, and then we'll just build our little frame. So I'm putting my dies cut side down. Now, this is the part that I always struggle with because I'm not the best at putting things on straight. So what I tend to do is just line them up like so. I think that looks about, that looks nigh on straight to me. Looking good to me, that one. You can tell I'm really concentrating now. I'm really quiet there. Oh, see, I always knock it with my finger when I do it. Right, let's just have a little play around here. So basically, just get that as straight as you can. Okay. Like so. Then I'm going to tape that in place there. And then tape it at the bottom as well. Like so. And then we're going to run that through our die cutting machine. So again, I'm just using my Gemini, so I'm using my base plate, my plastic shim, and then my cutting plate on the top and my dies in the middle, put side up. Okay, and then we're going to run that through the Gemini, like so. And we'll just grab it when it comes out the other side there. But you can see how everything, all these products are going to work absolutely perfectly together. So you're going to get these fabulous professional finished results at home. Okay. So I'm going to take, oh, look at that. I've got it perfect. Delighted with that. So we've got the frame nice and straight. Okay. So when we take this away, okay, we're going to take away our low tack tape like this. Okay. And then if we peel our little dies away, that we've got that lovely little frame ready to go on our card okay so what we're going to do now is we are going to pop that to one side because that's going to go on our base card i'm going to put these back on my magnetic sheet because obviously we don't want to lose our dies so what i always do is when i'm working with them i'm always kind of re-putting them back onto the magnetic sheet to make sure that i'm keeping them all nicely together okay so what we're going to do now and i've already done a little bit of free stamping is we're going to stamp our flowers so we're using the clematis um the clematis flower stamp okay sorry i'm reading the comments there that's a really good tip actually linda what you do is put all the squares in between stick down and then remove the squares you don't need to get a perfect shape oh that is an awesome tip thank you linda we'll definitely be doing that in the future Okay then, so what we're going to do is grab in our stamps, so Eve mine are a disgrace, they need a wash, need to, need to put them in the sink and give them a bit of a wash, I've been using them today you see. So I'm going to take my large one, I'm just going to put all three on the block together to be honest, 
So I've got my large, my medium and my small one like so and again with these stamps this is what's really cool about them so can you see look i'm getting them really close now you're going to see how grubby my stamps are how much of a the need they do need a clean okay but you can see how we've got that little extra natural polymer just on the top of your stamp there okay and what we've then done is taken the little notch out of the die okay so if i show you the die backing card oh my acetate's feet stuck there we go you can see so basically that then helps you to line it up okay you can see that julie's saying i didn't think it was wise to put more than one die through at a time julie i'll be honest i do it all the time and i haven't had a problem the problem that you'll have is if you don't tape them in place the dies can slip and move under each other and that's when you can do damage to your dies but as long as you're careful and you get them well taped in place you'll be absolutely fine Okay then, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stamp my flowers out. I'm just going to space these out a little bit so I can fit the dies under them. Okay, so basically all those little notches, I've got them all pointing upwards. Okay, so what I'm then going to do is take my clear embossing ink pad. Two to three weeks for this is the latest news, everyone. Two to three weeks, so it shouldn't be too much longer. And I'm going to take an anti-static bag. Okay. If I can get the lid off the little Tupperware. I'm really struggling with uh, with the lids today, aren't I? Genuinely can't get it off. There we go. Okay, so we're going to take an anti-static bag. Just give our card. Oh, that one's not very good. Let's see if this one's any better. That's better. Give it a bit of a dust over like that. Okay. And then we're going to stamp our flowers out. So for this project, you're going to need two large four medium and one small okay so i'm going to ink up my flower stamps so you want lots of tapping all over the image like so make sure your stamps are stuck to the block first i am going to clean my stamps after this this stamp along as well i'm going to chuck them all in the sink a bit of warm soapy water and then they'll be all nice and clean and ready to go again Okay, so what I'm going to do now is stamp down the clematis flowers. So I'm just positioning down and pressing. Then when we lift that off, we'll have a lovely stamped clematis flower. So what we're then going to do is take an our opaque bright white super fine embossing powder. So this is a wow one. We're going to sprinkle that over and then tap off the excess, Oops. like so. You can see, oh, I've moved that one, I've stamped it, I've rocked it a little bit. Right, so if this happens to you at home, I've put a little bit too much pressure on the stamp, okay? So what I've done is I've rocked it when I've stamped it, so I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna put that down there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is give me two seconds, grab some here. I'm going to give this a dust with an anti-static bag. Like so. And then we're going to take our stamps again. I'm going to re-ink them up with my clear embossing ink pad. So I want lots of tapping all over the image. Like so. And then we're going to place this down onto our, pe Ooh, onto our pearl paper. Put my stamp back on there. And place this down and press. Okay, so again, I'm not rocking the stamp. What I must have done is pop the stamp down and then rocked it the last time I stamped, so it gives us like a double image. So I'm going to place that down, press, and when you lift that off, we're going to put our um, opaque bright white embossing powder over the top and top of the excess and you can see that's a much better image okay so you can see how that that works okay so we're going to heat that up now i can see kerry's just saying she's used a blue ink pad on our lovely new stamps and it stained them so that is completely normal kerry basically photopolymer stamps are used in the printing process if you give me two minutes i'm going to heat this up first because if i don't what i'll do is talk and then 
the inkle have dried. So we're just chasing that embossing powder and just waiting a bit to turn and then as soon as it does we just move the heat gun of the image like so and you can see how we've then got the flowers all nicely heated up okay so kerry's saying i used a blue ink pad on my lovely new clemmer of stamps and is there a way of cleaning the ink off as soapy water didn't remove the color okay so kerry Basically, our stamps are made from photopolymer, and photopolymer is designed to absorb ink, okay? So it's used in the printing process, so it basically, the photopolymer sucks the ink in and then transfers it onto the paper. So it is completely normal for your stamps to discolour over time and to absorb ink, that's what they're designed to do. And actually, as they've kind of absorbed a little bit of ink, it, it gives them an even better printing impression. So it's nothing to worry about at all. You haven't done anything wrong. It is completely normal for the inks to stay in the stamps. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut these out. So can you remember how I said I had to put them all on the block with the little notches pointing upwards? So what I would also do is if I'm doing a batch of these, I always put a little arrow on my paper just pointing upwards. So I then know that those notches all went up over. So when I come with my dies, which as you can see here, can you see that there? got a little notch out the top okay what I then do is make sure that little notch is pointing upwards as well so I'm going to pop this over the top like so and then if I grab in I always like to put two little bits of low tack tape on my things when I'm taping them down okay so that one there and then I've got the little one here Again, and just line that up over the top like so and then a little bit more low tack tape so you do you need your low tack tape for this um, and then one more and just have a little look it's going to go under there And then a little bit more low tack tape just on the bottom here. Like I say, I always like to low tack tape the bottom of the dies as well. So you end up with two pieces on. Because look, if you only have one bit on, your die can move when you put it into your machine. Whereas if you just secure it down with the two pieces of tape, it just seems to help remove that movement factor of it. Now, something else that I picked up on in the group that's been asked as a couple of questions is... When you were running your dies through your die cutting machine and you've stamped and embossed, what you can sometimes find is a little bit of embossing powder is cracking off. That is normal for that to happen, okay? But what I've found helps is, depending on your die cutting machine, if you re reduce the amount of plates and the amount of pressure that you were putting onto the stamped image through the die cutting machine. So I know for a fact that my Gemini is... Um, is quite strong it puts a lot of pressure on the dies so what i do is i take out a plate when i come through um like when i run it through the machine if that makes sense so what i tend to do is these my gemini junior plates look at the state of them they're terrible they've got cracks in and everything but they work fine so i'm keeping them so i've got my base plate then i use the plastic shim again put my die cut side up and then i put my cutting plate on the top so in effect what I do is I'm removing out, you'd normally have your magnetic shim in that sandwich but I'm removing that out of the sandwich and it's just going to take a little bit less, it's going to put a little bit less pressure on the paper and the die if that makes sense but you'll still get a really nice cut. So if that's happening to you just get to know your die cutting machine, okay. So I'm going to run that through the Gemini, okay. And then hopefully when this comes out, these are all nicely die cut, which of course they are. So then we can just remove the die, okay, and you can see there's a tiny little bit um, cracked off here. But apart from that, it's, it's pretty much perfect, okay. So we're going to take these out. It's just to do with like the pressure of your die cutting machine. That's all, that's all it is when that happens. So we'll take those out and then um, we're going to add a little bit of glitter onto these. So again, you need two large 
four medium and one small. So I've got those that I've already done here. I think I've done a right little variety over here, haven't I? I've got loads. Right, so on two medium, four medium, sorry, one small. Right, that's it. It's all the little bits that I need to make this one up. So what we're going to do now is we are going to grab some of our um, dries clear glue. Okay, and we're going to just add some little dots into the under the stamens of the flowers and put a little bit of glitter onto these. So what we're going to do to do this is actually I've got a better bottle of glue here. This one's a little bit more full, so I'll use this one. So I'm going to grab in my scrap paper again. And then we're going to take our dries clear glue. Now with the dries clear glue, you buy your glue and then we sell the little metal tip. Okay. Seriously, if you're going for the glue, add one of the metal tips into your basket. It makes such a big difference because it means you can get right into the pre precision and um, really kind of get into the detail of the stamped image. So what I'm then going to do is take my glue and all I'm doing is putting like a little dot just onto the ends of each of the stamen, like this. And obviously the bigger the dot of glue you put on, the longer it's gonna to take to dry. Okay, and then I'm gonna use Crystal Twinkle. Now, in your instructions, you're gonna use Razzle Dazzle, okay? I'm using Crystal Twinkle in case you're just joining me. My Razzle Dazzle is now Razzle Dazzling all over the floor. It looks it looks awesome, but it's, I'm, I'm disappointed that that happened. So we're gonna take our Crystal Twinkle Glitter, pop that over the top, and then you can just see how that adds that little bit of sparkle onto the flowers, okay? So then we can pop those to one side. We're just gonna to start to build these up like so. Put in the little dots of glue just onto the little stamens like this so you can just work your way around like so and we'll just sprinkle that over and tap away the excess okay and you can see that there okay so i'm going to keep building these up so we'll do the medium ones next so again just a little bit of that dries clear glue just straight in onto the stamens like so you can just work your way around dotting this on you do kind of get into a little bit of a routine or a little bit of a system with it as well so we're going to lift up the petals and just chuck the the glitter over that's that one done do the next one so again little dots of um glue just under here Just going to cover that with the crystal twinkle glitter and then we're going to just do these ones as well okay thank you all so much for joining me today this one's still got a bit of a bit of low tack tape on we don't want that okay so we're going to just work around putting our little dots of glue under here and then we're going to chuck our crystal twinkle glitter over. Yeah, I have to keep thinking that. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to keep going. Like so. Putting those little dots on and just covering this with the glitter. that way as well okay and then we'll just do the little one now too okay and that's going to get covered with the glitter oh tip that one upside down let me see if i've got lift it up there we go okay i'm gonna put this glitter back into the jar okay 
okay so that's going to go over there get rid of that now and then let me just have a little look how we're getting on over here with this background so my background's drying really nicely actually it's not as hot in my craft room today isn't it crazy if you live in england because i know i've got some people watching internationally honestly i was absolutely scorching in my craft room last week and then this week it's totally different it's freezing isn't it so i'm going to next we'll stamp our sentiment while we're waiting of that um the background to dry so what we're going to do is take that little piece of crystal white card that popped out of the middle of the frame i'm going to take our anti-static bag and our sentiment so i've chosen a slightly different one to what i've used on the finished sample but it's still from the birthday sentiments stamp set i'm going to just grab in my acrylic block i'll just swap my stamps on could have done with a smaller block but okay so what i'm then going to do is i'm going to ink up my stamp so again i'm just using that clear embossing ink pad okay and then we're going to place that down under here and press so again you want firm even pressure on the stamp and then lift that off okay and then we're going to grab our metallic silver super fine embossing powder that's not metallic silver super fine we have a little punch as you can tell i've been crafting today and my stuff's all over the shop so i'm gonna chuck that over back off the excess Okay, if you've got any little stray flecks, like I've got a bit of a fingerprint going on there. Just go in with a paintbrush and brush that away. Okay, so we're going to pop that into there. Very, very jealous there, Lynn. Baking at 41 degrees in the Costa Blanca. Very nice. Okay, so I'm going to heat this up. So to heat this up, all I'm doing is just holding my heat gun still and then as soon as that powder melts and changes, which it goes, the silver goes pretty quick to be honest, I'm just going to move it over my image like so. So then when I hold that up, you can just see the difference that that then makes. Okay, so Eileen's asking when's your shop opening again we we haven't got any plans to reopen the shop in the near future and we're just kind of monitoring the whole situation and what's kind of going on at the moment and um, because we are all working socially distanced and things like that so we're really utilizing the full space of the unit at the moment so we don't really have a um a, a set date for that i'm afraid okay beverly's asking how often should we re-ink our ink pad if we use it daily i do mine weekly is that too much Honestly, it's like how long is a piece of string? It depends on how much you're using it, how big the stamps are. Um, there's not really a set rhyme or reason as to why the way that you need to um, to re-ink it. It should just be whenever you kind of feel like it, it's a little bit dry. If it feels a little bit dry, just pop them on and um, it, it'll just re refresh your ink pad, basically. Okay. So hopefully that should answer your question. I think that the live feed might have just frozen, but hopefully it should be back up and running. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab in my fancy rectangle dice. So that's these ones here, which are gorgeous. And then I'm going to take one of these frames. So I'm just figuring out which one's going to be the best one to fit around the edge. So I think that one is going to be the best fit actually. So what I'm going to do is pop my little die straight over the top, okay, and then we're going to grab in a little bit of um, low tack tape, okay, and we're going to tape our die in place. So again, what we're going to do is tape it with two pieces of tape just to make sure that the die doesn't move, and then what we're also going to do is tape a little bit of the rose quartz pearl card i'm just chopping it off the end of there <laughs> and then we're going to cut the next biggest one okay so again a little bit of low tap tape just to hold our die in place i'm not too worried about that one moving too much because it's just a plain plain shape okay so we're going to grab in our plates i think these two pieces might both just go on my junior plate 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that one there and pop that one there. And then I'm going to run that through our die cutting machine. So I'm going to pop those two plates together and then run that through again. Okay. There we go. It's just feeding through the, Gem the Gemini there now. So we're going to take these away like so. And then you can see you've got your perfect little mats and layers for your sentiments there. And I think these dies are lovely for when... Um, so when we kind of you match for your sentiments and things like that i can see in the comments a few of you were saying that the feed keeps freezing i know there's nothing that i can do at my at this end it's all going out properly but to be honest the weather's not looking great outside so i'm wondering if there's a bit of a storm on the way which is maybe just interrupting it a little bit okay so i'm pop my dies back over there i'm going to edge around these with our chisel tip glue pen and cover them with the crystallina glitter okay so we're going to edge all the way around, just using our glue pen, like so. So you just hold it at that slight angle and then just drag the glue pen towards you. Okay, so we're going to stick these back together. Okay. Oh, and see a question. Anne's asking, why do you always put your dies face down on the plate? It's personal preference, to be honest with you, Anne. And I'm one of these people, I like to keep my base plate completely flat so I never cut into it. So you only ever cut into my top cutting plate. It's just personal preference, though. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is Matt and layer my little sentiment together. So where I've got bits where like my removable tape stuck and then my glitter sticks as well what i tend to do is i've got this paintbrush here that i basically painted something with pva i didn't necessarily wash the brush and the brush has now gone hard but what i found is it's brilliant if you just shuffle along like this it's great for removing where you've got excess bits of low tack tape on your card and then where your glitter sticks you can just kind of nudge it back into line so that's another little little thing that i've discovered recently so what i'm going to do now is grab in some foam pads just to mat and layer our sentiment up like so so we'll pop a couple of foam pads on here and just layer these together you can see it uh, joanna's saying that i froze when i was talking about the shop so basically the we haven't got a set date for the shop for reopening at the moment we're kind of just monitoring the situation we haven't got a date in the near future when the actual shop will be reopening because we are literally using all the space at the moment to kind of socially distance for working and things like that. But as soon as we have an update, of course, we'll post on the page and things, but it, it's probably not looking likely to be in the near future. Okay, so well, I'm just going to check on my background here. So that's drying away nicely. So while that's still drying, I'm going to pop my sentiment to one side as well. So we start to get all the elements together to assemble our project. So while we're waiting for those to dry, we're going to use some of the spring foliage now to create some foliage for the background of our project. So I'm going to take the lovely swirl stamp, okay, and I'm going to take some heat resistant acetate. I'm just going to grab a sheet of those. Right, and see, Jennifer's asking, do you know when you'll have the square dies in? At the moment, Jennifer, we haven't got a date. It'll be in the next few weeks. Basically, we were in really bright and early on Monday morning so we could kind of sort out the stock and get the reorder put straight in. Um, we got most of the orders packed at the weekend, so we thought, right, we'll we'll kind of sit down and sort everything out. So we, we reordered on Monday. We're just waiting for a date back from the factory as to when they'll be ready to be delivered so as soon as we have that date what we're going to do is pop them on pre-order on the website and then you can um you'll be able to pre-order them as well okay so what i'm going to do now is take my heat resistant acetate and you should all be pros at stamping and embossing on the heat resistant acetate okay because we have done it so many times in the stamp along now so what we're going to do is just over our heat resistant acetate with our anti-static bag and then we're going to take our um our swirl stamp here so we're going to ink it up with a clear embossing ink pad if you want lots of light tapping 
all over the image. That was just my plates falling on the floor, I do believe. Okay. And then we're going to stamp this down twice. So we're going to stamp one here, like so, and lift that off. Looks pretty good to me. I'm going to do exactly the same. We're going to stamp another one here. Trying to figure out where I've stamped the first one. It does help. Stamp that one there. Now with the heat resistant acetate, you only need a light pressure because you stamped it onto a um a slippery surface. Okay, I'm trying to keep up with all your questions and comments. I'm doing my best here. I can see there's one about foam pads. We do have them on the website, I believe they're out of stock at the moment. Um, I, think it was, I think I saw something about lemon sherbet glitter as well. We haven't got a date on that at the moment. It's a, obviously with the current situation and things, products are taking a lot longer to come back into stock than um, they normally would. So again, just keep an eye on the website. As soon as we have any news, we'll be posting on Facebook and it'll be listed on the website. Okay, so what we're going to do now is heat up the swirl. So to do that again, I'm just holding my heat gun still. And then as soon as that powder melts and changes, I'm just moving it over the image. Okay, like so. So you can see we've got those swirls there. So what I'm going to do now is roughly cut those out, just into a bit of a bit of a rectangle. Okay, and then we're going to take the swirls, okay, and we're going to take our dries clear glue. Okay, and see, again, there's quite a lot of stock questions coming in. I'm doing my best to kind of keep up and answering them. But it, uh, I'm getting a bit confused now. So, so I can see foam pads again. We don't have a date. And um, as soon as we, as soon as we have a date or anything, obviously they'll go straight back onto the website. Seriously, the best way to find out about stock, I do try and know all of the dates of everything, but I, I, I don't all the time. So the best way to find out anything about stock is if you just go onto the website and then where you click where it says sold out underneath it'll say notify me when back in stock if you click on that button and put your email address in it'll subscribe you to the stock newsletter for that product so basically when that product the stock's then loaded you'll get an email straight away okay and um, so that really is the best way the best way to do it okay then so what we're going to do now is take our dries clear glue and we're going to go all the way just following the swells adding lots of little dots of pva glue under here like so so basically this is going to give you like a, a, a pearl effect okay but what you could do if you wanted to have like more of a domed effect is if you had some liquid pearls or do you know like the cosmic shimmer um pearl pvas if you did your little dots with those it would give you like a raised pearl finish So we're working around there like that and then we are going to grab the Winter Wonderland glitter. Now this came out, I think this came out later last year and I think everyone kind of misses it but it's such a lovely, lovely colour. So basically if you are Christmas card making now, Winter, Woodland, Winter Wonderland, <laughs> Wonderland would be awesome for um, snow and for snowflakes as well. It's like a white glitter but it's got a pearl essence to it but it's still got a sparkle in it, if that makes sense. So it might look a little bit grey on your screen, but it is a really beautiful glitter. So I would definitely be investing in this one for Christmas. It's a lovely, lovely colour. So I'm just going to sprinkle that over the swirl. So you can see, can you see the difference that makes there? Just by adding the glitter. And then when the, gl when the glue obviously dries, you'll get the sparkle coming through more. So this is the one here that we've glittered. This one we haven't okay so we're going to continue on doing um tracing the swirls so we're going to add the little dots of glue onto here like so okay I'm just going round, adding the little dots of PVA into there. Okay, so you can see the difference that that then makes. 
okay okay and then i'm going to sprinkle over the winter wonderland glitter okay if you can see that there linda i don't understand your question there why emboss if you add glue wouldn't the glue add enough height i don't i'm sorry i don't understand the question so we stamped an emboss to start with to give us the design okay and because we're working on heat resistant acetate that's why we embossed it then to add the extra sparkle and add an extra layer of dimension we added the little dots of glue onto um onto the swirl to trace it to add the extra level of dimension so i hope that helps explain because if we didn't stamp the swirl to start with we wouldn't have the design to trace okay so what i'm going to do now is pop those to one side so we're building up all of our little elements over here ready to start and get building our card blank i'm going to swap out the swirl stamp okay and then we're going to swap in the little for the berry type spray the little berry flower spray okay so what we're going to do now is take our heat resistant acetate again I'm going to give it a dust with an anti-static pad and we're going to take our clear embossing ink pad. I would have liked a smaller acrylic block to stick, oh there we go, to stick this on. Okay, so we're going to ink this up and then we're going to stamp this down. So we're going to do one and then we're going to do four, we're going to do six of these. So one, two and then we're going to pop a little bit of the embossing powder on so and see where i'm going so i'm using the opaque bright white super fine okay running out of space here on my desk right i'm going to stamp another couple so one two three and then we're going to have one more so we'll just stamp that one there and then that'll be our six little berry flower sprays type things. It's going to be like a multi-seasonal stamp set, this one, isn't it? Okay, there we go. So I'm going to tip that back into the jar and then heat that up. Okay, I'll just get rid of that little bit of extra embossing powder that I've got on my mat. Put the lid on there. And then we're going to heat this up. So to do that, we're going to use our heat gun. And just heat the little sprays like so. You can see it's going super, super quick as well on the acetate. And then what we're going to do you can see i've got a bit of a thumbprint going on there but we won't worry about that because when we cut it out we'll just cut it off so you'd never know okay so we're going to trim around these like so and then we're going to trim around the edge of these just roughly you don't have to be too precise about it or anything so we're going to trim around there. I always like to roughly cut out as well before I actually cut out, if that makes sense. I just find it a little bit easier. So all I'm doing is just trim around the edge and then trimming the bottom off like that. Okay. Then we'll do the next one. So just going to trim around, trimming this out like so. Then we'll do these two over here. So, oh, Heather, good comment. You would like a matching dies to foliage, right? Stay tuned, everyone. I'm going to give you a sneak peek. Okay. Sneak peek of what's coming this month. I can say it now. It's the first, isn't it? So excited. First of July. Can't believe it's July. Can you believe we started these stamp alongs? Was it March? March or April, wasn't it? It was at the very start. Madness. Right, so we've trimmed those out. 
Okay, sorry, I'm useless. I'm pulling my hands towards me and you can't see what I'm doing. Basically, you haven't missed anything too exciting. All I've done is just cut the little things out, okay? Just so I could see what I was doing. I obviously brought them a bit closer. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our Unicorn Sparkle Glitter, which is this one here, okay? It's this lovely, it's like, I love this glitter. It's like really flaky and chunky, okay? But it's like got a pinky, golden hue, green. It's like multicoloured, okay? So what we're then going to do is we're going to take our dry clear glue again and just on the ends of these little berries, we're going to put a little dot. You dry clear glue. Like so, okay? And then we're going to, oh, hopefully not smudge it like I just did there. Then we're going to dunk it in the glitter. And then you can see how that then clings and gives you these awesome like little sparkly flowery sprays it's brilliant isn't it okay so i'm going to pop that one to one side and we're just going to keep going so we're going to do all of these like that little dots of glue okay and then we're going to pop this under there tap away the excess i'm just going to keep doing that with all six of these little sprays Okay, I'd say I was going to give her a sneak peek then and then I thought oh no I think I've taken the box out of my craft room but I haven't it's next to me I can see it I can see it out of the corner of my eye there so I'm going to pop that into there I, I, I love this colour glitter as well this unicorn sparkle it's so pretty such a nice one really useful as well because depending on what colour you put it it kind of shows different colours underneath one side okay we've just got two more to do now and then we've pretty much got all of our little elements ready just to make the card up okay so i'm gonna put this under there oh that's a good shout sharon the berries would look good with glossy accents as well yes they would wouldn't they i think this stamp would be nice as well well actually i know it is because I've, I've done it for christmas but if you stamp it in green and then do your little berries in red on the end, that looks pretty too. Because then they look like little holly berries. Okay, so you can see that there. So we've built that all up nicely. So I'm gonna, I'll give you the little sneak peek now, okay? Because you're all asking about foliage. So for Christmas, okay, we've got some new foliage stamps and dies coming out that are like festive ones. Let's bring this in close, okay? But look at the glitter. Okay, this is brand new. Okay, this is the, the brand new glitters that we'll be launching later this month and the new foliage stamp. But look, look. <gasps> so it looks dark green that way, okay? And then when you tilt it this way, it goes like to a gold. Isn't it amazing? I'm obsessed with them so much. So that's one of the new foliage stamps. Obviously, you get a lot more than just that one design in the packet, but that's the only one that I've got to hand that I can show you. So that's a little sneak peek of what's coming which is all very exciting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build the flowers up. So to start with, I'm going to take my large ones. Please, if you're doing yours at home, make sure that um, you, the glue's dry, okay, from the glitter you've put on. But what I'm going to do is just curl the petals between my finger and thumb, like so. Okay, are you all a little bit excited for the Christmas stuff now? I'm excited for the Christmas things. I'm always excited for the Christmas things. Okay, so I'm going to curl these just between our finger and thumb. So hold it down in the middle and then just curl the petals like this. Okay. And then you can just scrunch the centre up just to lift it a little bit. And then I'm going to use a little bit of my Kalal 3D glue gel to stick these together. There it is. Okay. So a little bit of glue onto there. And then what you can do is just twist them to offset them a little bit so you can layer them up. And I'm going to take the small one that we glittered and stick that one in the middle. Okay. Pull those petals together. A bit of glue and then just stick that down. You can see 
how that's built the lovely flower up. Now what I'm going to do now is um, take a pearl, okay, and I'm going to pop the pearl into the middle of the flower. So we're going to put a blob of PVA in the middle. So what these are is these are like um, little, the proper pearl beads basically, They're like jewellery making beads, but I've been using them in my crafting because they work. So I just put a big blob of glue in the middle and then just, just place that in and that's it basically. Okay. So what I'm going to do is do, to build my next flowers up. So I'm going to build two of the medium sized ones up. So it's the same technique. You just literally curl the petals between your finger and thumb. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to build the flowers up. So literally just stick two together. Blob of glue gel on the back. And just stick them like this. Okay, you can play about with the petals as well and lift them, that's what I tend to do. And then I'm going to put a pearl in the middle of there. So again, a big blob of glue. I'll go in the middle there. Okay, so I'm going to build another one up exactly like that. So we're going to just work around curling all of the petals. Like so, okay, and I'm going to put a blob of glue into the middle, it's just 3D glue I've used to stick those together, blob of PVA in the middle, and I need to find the little beads going to run away I think, not be the only one whose desk ends up like this when you're crafting. Okay, so I'm going to grab in another little bead. Let me just get one out of the box. So that's then going to go onto there, like so. So you can see how that's all built up nicely. Okay, so what we're then going to do is we're going to take our stenciled background. I'm just working out if that's dry enough to run through my die cutting machine. And I'm going to risk it, I think it might be. I'm gonna do is just give it a little dust first with my just it's just a makeup brush. I'm dusting it over the bin. Sorry, I've pulled it out of shot there. Okay, give that a little dust over. And what I'm also gonna do is just take my heat gun and just blast this over. Just to help it dry a little bit. I'm sure lots of you at home have already pre-prepared this bit. Okay, I think that's going to be dry enough. I'm going to risk it. What's the worst that can happen? So, we're going to take like the third one in of the fancy rectangle dies. And we're going to cut that out from there. So, I'm going to use a little bit of low tack tape again. Okay. Go on there, it's gonna go on there. Now I'm gonna run that through our Gemini again. And hopefully, let's just fingers crossed that it's gonna go through all right, okay? And it's I'm not just gonna end up with texture paste all over my plates because that would not be a great look. So we're gonna run this through like so. Okay. So there we go, that's die cutting through nicely now. It's getting there. And I'm going to take that out of the machine. Oh, it's worked. It's worked. There we go. Okay, so when we take that away, look at that. Okay, it's cut it out absolutely perfectly. So what we're going to do now is start to build our card up. So we're going to stick that down on our base card. So I'll just grab a few foam pads to do that. Okay. So this is the Petite Poker stencil that I've used on here to create that lovely background. I'm going to just stick them for, I like a few foam pads on my projects. If this is the first time that you've um, watched the stamp along, 
I do tend to put quite a few on. Okay, we're going to take the backs off of, oops, take the backs off. Hopefully just take the foam pads backs off, not the actual foam pad. Okay, and that's going to go onto our card. Like so, I really feel the lighting in here is not doing the glitter justice today. I'm sorry, it's a really dull day outside and it's just looking everything. Everything's looking really dull, isn't it? So we're going to pop our little frame in the middle as well. So to stick that on, I'm going to use some foam pads again. So what I'm going to do is just cut some foam pads down because my foam pads are probably going to be a little bit too too fat to stick them on so i'm going to just trim these down like that yeah like that that's better so trim those off and then just position them down and do our card blank and we're just going to work our way around like so adding in rogue bit of glitter on there we'll get rid of that foam pad. another foam pad there okay and then we're going to take the backs off of these like so i'm just going to work around hi barbara i can see you just joined but that's Barbara who um, makes lots of the cards for um, all finished samples as well. So you'll have seen lots of Barbara's cards recently on Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to stick that down into our card blank like so. And then we're going to pop our foam, pa our foam pads, our sentiment on foam pads in the middle. Like that. Now one little tip that I have found with this is you might just want to put a little bit of... Um, a little bit of PVA on the back of your foam pads, okay? And it it's it, the reason for that is basically you're sticking it onto like loose glitter. So you might find that the foam pads just aren't strong enough to keep holding it, okay? So what we're then going to do is pop our flowers into the corner. So I'm going to put one there and one up there and one in the top corner there. So to stick these down, I'm going to use a little bit of 3D glue gel just on the back. So, okay, and then we're going to take our foliage. So I'm going to start off with these lovely swirls. I'm going to trim quickly around the edge. And then we'll stick these in. So I'm going to put a bit of glue gel onto the back of there. And then tuck that one underneath and then we'll do another one over here let's just work around like this my scissors are a bit squeaky today they're making a weird noise there okay so we're gonna stick that one in there so you can see how that's starting to build up really nicely now then we're going to take these lovely little berry ones and I always just nick the edges off, the, off them. I just find it a little bit easier for sticking them. And then we're going to just layer these in. So I'm going to tuck one in here and one in here. And then we're just going to build this all up. Okay, so we're going to put that one there. And then this one here. This one up here. And then we're going to put another one just underneath. Okay, and that, you can obviously fiddle about with these and get them 
exactly where you want them but that would then be your finished project so you can see how that all then starts to nicely come together okay so i'm going to flip the camera around so i can see you all again but there we go that's our finished project for today so mine's a little bit different to the finished sample because obviously on my finished one i'd use the lovely razzle dazzle glitter it's a bit more blingy that one and um, whereas that one's a little bit more subtle so it just depends what effect you want oh no all my pearls are falling off leave your card flat to dry as well but hopefully you have all stamped along at home and you have got a fabulous project at the end of this so i really hope that you've enjoyed today's stamp along i don't i'm not sure whether there'll be a stamp along next week i have to be honest and um, we will do our best to try and fit one in but um at the moment we're kind of it's a little bit crazy we're moving warehousing around and it's just a little bit um a little bit nuts so hopefully um but if there will if there'll be a stamp along i will put the dates and everything out but i don't think that there will be one next week there should be one the following week though so hopefully that'll be all right so i really hope that you have all i can see i've got glitter on my nose i can see it keep sparkling back at me <laughs> um, hopefully you've all enjoyed today's stamp along and you've got some fabulous um projects that you've created i would love to see them all in the stamps by chloe facebook group and hopefully you are all loving using your new nesting dies as well so if you missed the start of the video i did explain that we've reordered them we're just waiting for delivery date of when they'll be ready to come to us and then yes we'll be putting them on pre-order on the website so if you missed out or there's any that you know you definitely want please do not panic they are all on reorder okay so we will be getting some back in and um, we're trying to kind of get them on a rush order to get them here quicker than we originally thought we were going to be able to so fingers crossed we are doing our absolute best back at hq to um try and get them back in as soon as we can thank you all so much for your comments and i really hope that you've enjoyed that project today and um, we'll be keeping posting lots of inspiration up on the page this week and um, so yeah very exciting lots, lots of new stuff coming as well obviously i've given you a tiny very very tiny sneak peek at the new christmas stuff um so that'll be i can see a couple of you asking when christmas will be launching that'll definitely be the very end of july and um, we've been having a little bit of a discussion as to whether because we've got some new products that we were originally going to launch the beginning of july but we, we we might put it back we might just launch christmas we haven't fully decided yet and um, but don't worry we'll keep you all informed you need to hop over the website get onto the mailing list chloe's creative cards Oh, I hit the wrong button there. Chloe'sCreativeCards.co.uk And if you sign up to our newsletter mailing list, you'll get an email every time we have new products, every time that I'm doing a Facebook Live, every time that we have a new video tutorial or anything, please do sign up to the newsletter. So I really hope that you've enjoyed today's um, stamp along. If you haven't done so already, there is a free download sheet on chloe'screativecards.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash news i can't remember if this is stamp along 12 or stamp along 13 i'm not 100 percent sure but if you click on the on the picture for this card it'll take you onto the page and then if you scroll down to the bottom there's a free pdf download so you'll be able to go on and download your free instruction sheet that tells you everything you need and the step by steps to make the card so i really hope that you have all enjoyed today's project and i will see you all again very soon bye